you know in the last 3 years i managed to work with those people uh, you know on different topics which are related to human on a chip or organ on a chip so in the very beginning i will try to uh, create the scenario that uh, what is actually drug development process it's actually simple but uh, if we go in depth it is quite laborious and risky work so after that you know the current trends i will be discussing and then the advance of uh, human on a chip and why we need that technology and uh, because human on a chip has evolved during the last couple of years but you know to you know develop that technology uh, in a mature level it really requires lot of money lot of people and of course lot of time as well but that is going to replace you know the traditional or conventional approaches that we have been using in order to develop or test the drug that normally people are selling it so that's what uh, the point is so human on a chip is a quite big topic so we can divide it and uh, we will just try to target uh, one part of that huge technology that is organ on a chip or in our lab we call it as mps microphysiological system and then we have biosensors and platform so i will try to discuss briefly that uh, how we develop the platform and uh, what can be the possible requirements for a platform to be able to you know use in this uh, technology and then conclusion and in the end of course question and answer but uh, i would uh, recommend that if anyone is uh, having any query or any questions during the presentation you are more than welcome to ask me so here uh, what is the drug development process before that we need to understand what is drug so drug is a molecule or a compound which specifically targets a patient so for example a patient has got any disease any health abnormality or any other problem that uh, is required to be you know solved or resolved then in that case you have to have you know a drug a chemical compound that can treat that particular health issue but that's not straight forward because it's not like in in our ninth tenth or you know in our early age classes we used to study different compounds we know their very simple properties like this compound is hydrophilic this compound is hydrophobic this compound has melting point of this uh, you know level like 100 degrees centigrade some have some have you know 300 degrees centigrade so these different properties we straight forwardly study but bio is very complex you know it's not that much simple that you just study a simple compound and you give it to a human being and you know uh, you 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 say that or you expect that it will cure the disease of that patient so we got an uh, you know information that what is drug so drug drugs important are the only manifesto is patient a human how that drug can facilitate that human to recover or to avoid that possible chronic disease that he can have in future so normally we go to a medical store with the prescription of doctor he always recommends some drugs obviously some like in our terminology we say that medicines koi hame tablet di jati hai but we need to understand that that formula that compound it took years and years to develop and then it came into the market because this is a matter of life a drug that has some toxic problems some other health related issues it can really ruin the whole population of that society so that's also very critical and risky so def that's why because it is related to life it takes lot of time to develop so here in this slide i have added a very simple approach to you know let all of the participants understand it, how the drug development process takes the step by step process so in the very beginning like you you try to understand first that what is the problem a health problem that a human being is suffering from so you first try to study that and then you say that okay this this disease is related to for example liver 
so liver has different biomarkers different you know uh, in in a simple language we can say ke bahut sare ishare wo de sakta hai ke yaar agar isko agar hum pakde if we talk at this thing it can cure that problem right but that is hundred and thousands of directions it's not that much straight forward that somebody has got liver cancer that means there would be only one problem in that liver and we just try to cure that it will be okay second thing just for example indication agar hame mila for example the drug that you are going to develop and if you are if it is actually curing but it can create problem for other organs maybe wo aapke lungs ko wo drug lungs ke liye problematic ho ya kisi aur kidney ke liye problematic ho so for the drug it's also important that not only it cures the specific problem but it should not have any side effects on other organs on other part of the body so first of all you target a specific disease and then you study that how many biomarkers can possibly help us ki hum wo disease ko cure kar sake ya usko avoid kar sake ab for that when initially when you study it you have thousand and thousands of compounds chemical compound biological compounds जो जो आपको लगता है कि यार ये अगर कंपाउंड हम यूज करें तो इट कैन पॉसिबली ट्रीट इट यू नो हाउ यू गेट दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑब्वियसली बाय यू नो लुकिंग इनटू देयर डेटा शीट सम अदर प्रीलिमिनरी रिजल्ट्स यू नो केमिकल बायोलॉजिकल कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ दोस कंपाउंड्स यू गेट टू नो कि यार ये कंपाउंड्स काम आ सकते हैं बट इनिशियली यू ट्राई टू यू नो गैदर दोस इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट डिफरेंट कंपाउंड्स एंड यू नो यू कैन सी ओ हियर there is around 15000 compounds or 20000 compound so much in big number and it really takes around 7 to 8 hours for the scientists for the biologists to gather those information to chemically biologically study those compounds and then you know no, no. and then try to sort out sort list those uh, compounds that which one can better effect or better help us to cure that particular health problem and then you know uh, after you know spending 5 to 6 or 7 years then you jump to a next stage and that is preclinical trials and in that trial what you do you actually shortlist actually you are coming from top to bottom first you have write like theoretically millions of compounds then you take it to thousands and then you know you 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 divide it into you know hundreds of compounds so in the next stage of drug development process you name it any drug for example you have a disease of uh parkinson's disease or any other particular disease you name it so uh let's say that it's type a disease and now we have jumped to the next stage that is uh, uh preclinical uh, trials and that you have 500 compounds i'm just giving you an example it can have 1000 compound it can have 200 300 compound but one thing is sure that it would be in hundreds of uh, compounds that you think that possibly it can help us to treat that particular problem so this really takes a lot of time because what you do in the first stage like drug discovery you spend some you know half a decade there you try to you know do some experiments in in laboratory some chemical you know studies you you do and some theoretical studies let you know using some computational methods in preclinical you normally target the animals you like chua hai kutta hai uh, i mean pig rabbit so these animals you try to give these drugs or these molecules or compounds to those animals and then see the effect ke iska koi side effect to nahi hai ya particularly kya jo hum jis cheez ke liye hum bana rahe hain kya ye compound wo kaam kar bhi raha hai ya nahi kar raha and second thing in preclinical preclinical we also do some experiments in laboratory some targeted you know you know petri dish or some other 3d culture we do in later slides i will be you know trying to discuss uh, how we do in laboratory but this also takes a lot of uh, you know number of years like 7 years 5 years sometimes 7 8 years once we shortlist because from this we come to know ke ab ye ye compounds hain jo waqai in animals pe mufeed sabit ho rahe hain they are viable actually so again we shortlist you, you know ek top to down down approach are are many to few approach aa rahi hai ki ab hamare paas 10 compounds hai 20 compounds hai now we are trying to target those clinical trials like we have patients aur un patients mein hum ye compounds means obviously drug wo apply kar rahe hain then we are looking into or analyzing 
the results that whether it's curing or not or kya hum ye sare ke sare compounds sare ke sare patients ko dete hain obviously no there is some approach in the later slides i will be creating i, I, I will try to create a scenario that uh, how do we do that in cl clinical trials like abhi humne covid ka jo pandemic which unfortunately still it's going on so how that process took to you know develop that drug or vaccine so this also takes the same process but the pandemic was so critical that it took really you know significantly less time and that's because of some other technology that they, they are using but still you see two around it took two years anyways then once you get some good and positive results then you go to fda i mean uh, you know food and drug administration or in in pakistan break or any other you know authority in your country or the country where you're going to trying to sell that uh, product uh you provide them all the proofs all the results or clinical preclinical and other you know proofs and then you get the approval and then you start selling that product so that is actually a generic process through which every company goes to develop that uh drug now you can see that this this takes around you know 20 years No, on average it takes around 14 years to yeah, develop a drug right so here uh, again it's a drug discovery a drug Green development process, process and uh, you know this this slide gives you a more detailed uh, understanding about how a drug is developed like 2 to 3 years it takes to target the discovery like you came to know that this patient or this group of people or having any That's specific right. pro problem so you try to understand it and then you move to lead identification like you start doing some high throughput you know screen screening using some elisa and some other characterization kits to further figure out that what possible compounds are being used and then lead optimization further ex experiments further you know you know trials uh, in laboratory they are being done to you know uh shortlist those compounds mm -hmm. for a specific drug discovery and it takes around 1 to 3 years and then we have preclinical trial that is around 1 to 2 years and then clinical trials so basically the company who which follow the clinical trials because in clinical trials you jump to the humans you jump directly to the patients who are suffering from those diseases which you target actually so that is actually you know divided into three phases so in the first first phase you select specific number of people in the second phase you select uh, you know different classes of the people classes i mean that some people health would be healthy some people would be with those uh, you know uh, disease and uh, in the third phase you you know take the number quite big like 2000 3000 patients and then you collect the entire you know information proofs experiments results everything and you go to fda to and then it reviews and if there is further problem further doubts they again ask you to go back to any step and you have to start again so like you you can read here that it it takes around 10 to 7 17 years or 20 years for each drug and uh, like you 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 remember you we started from 10000 15000 molecules and then we converge it to like 10 molecules and after clinical trials we jump to a one very good molecule or very you know viable effective uh, you know uh, drug to come into the market so if you see it's very unfortunate that only 10% are right now the number is even declining because you know more and more experiments evidences are coming so now it's around 7% that the probability of success that have this meeting now has unlimited okay so sorry so you know the probability of a success that you started right from the sketch when you had so many molecules that you were thinking to that you will uh, develop a uh, drug from there to the end result that fda is actually approving your drug it's not more than 7% and one drug on average it takes around 2.6 billion dollars to be developed so it's huge huge amount 
so here yes again a detailed you know step by step process through which a drug discovery is taken so i will briefly discuss about it so the first one is you know it is just a kind of continuation of what the previous slides i have told you but this one i will focus more on clinical trials so this is research and development in this first you target at the disease you you know the scanned different you know biomarkers on to which you will target it then compounds short listing of the compounds and then characterizing studying those compound this takes 6 7 years right then we have preclinical results like you do experiments in your lab animals so you 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 i mean you focus those animals which uh, scientifically they have more resemblance to the humans so that we can claim that okay if it is effective on this animal that means it would be possibly effective as much as possible to you know the humans so this third step is very important here i want to shed some light that uh, clinical trial so in clinical trials in the very first phase that is phase number 1 you select 20 to 80 people and they all are mostly healthy people and you first give that drug that you have developed using first three steps to so that uh, you know uh healthy people and see that what is its effect and then in the second phase it's around 100 and 300 people and you try to divide them into two groups it is the same process that companies you know uh, you know astrazeneca and other company they followed it's called placebo effect like aapko ek capsule doctor capsule de raha hai aapko ke ye aap capsule le to aapka sara tension khatam ho jayega so it's it may be a placebo effect that you uh, there is nothing inside that uh, capsule but you feel like you feel like that there is uh, different chemicals which is definitely going to cure everything into my body and i will be feeling fresh asal mein wo placebo effect hota hai to wo covid mein bhi isi tarah se hota tha ke aap do uh, let's say aap 500 logon ko le aaye aur aapne usko divide kar diya 250 250 mein aur 250 ko aapne injection lagaya matlab aapne vaccine lagayi 250 ko nahi lagaya लेकिन उन पांच सौ में से किसी को नहीं पता कि मुझे लगी या नहीं लगी दे ऑल फील लाइक उनको लगी आई मीन दे आर वैक्सीनेटेड बट सम ऑफ देम वोट बी वैक्सीनेटेड एंड डेट्स ऑफ दिस कैलकुलेट द एफिकेसी ऑफ दैट वैक्सीन और ड्राइव सो ये 200 सौ आई मीन दो सौ तीन सौ लोग लोगों को वो फेज टू में ले आते हैं एंड देन फेज थ्री इट्स द बिगेस्ट पॉसिबल नंबर ऑफ पीपल दैट फर्दर यू नो कन्फर्म द वायबिलिटी ऑफ दैट ड्रग दैट साइंटिस्ट आर डेवलपिंग and there's around 3 3000 people so again you know the division of those phases is like that so jis tarah se inse results milte hain so these all results they are reviewed evaluated and then this is further approved and after that you know that particular company which actually developed their drug got the approval it starts selling so that is a simple but very laborious uh, you know drug discovery or drug development process so here i think in the previous uh, slide i told uh, that 2.6 billion dollar that's the average cost and the time that's around 15 years to develop any drug so so we understand that drug discovery is very laborious costly and risky process so what we should do then ek aur cheez aati hai is slide se pehle main aata hu to still there are so so many people who who claim that how about animal models ke hamare paas animals hain jo bhi hum drug banaye koi bhi banda hai jo drug bana raha hai so ke uth ke aur wo kahe ke bhai theek hai hum is animal ko lagate hain agar is pe waqai ye masla hal hua to we will feel like humans can also use that but here is a problem so science is telling us lot of enormous experiments have been done to prove monkeys and other animals they are not same like we human beings matlab unki physiology unka behavior sara jo health behavior it's not exactly same like we humans what i want to say that if any drug is developed and that is curing a specific problem of a monkey that never means that it will be as effective to a human being or it may be effective but it may be dangerous to other issues in the health for example i have some liver problem and the drug that you tested on a monkey and you are giving me it really cured me the problem that i was facing that was liver 
but it started creating problems with my kidney. It's possible. And that has been proved that so many drugs later on, which took the process of 15 to 20 years and, you know, invested so much amount after two, three years, they came into the market, they started selling, the whole world was buying. And after five years, 10 years, people started giving evidences that this drug is creating so many problems for the other things in the body. And again, the problems can be divided into two things. First one is acute problems. I mean, acute health, health diseases. I mean, one thing is that you have drug, you have to take the drug, and within five minutes, ten minutes, two hours, two days, five days, one month, you have to have another problem with that drug. That's kind of acute problem. But sometimes drugs also create chronic problems. That you don't know now, but in 15-20 years, there is a problem in the So obviously, such problems, with the passage of time you study, Second thing, in recently, Korea, they also banned the animal testing. Because normally what happened is that we cosmetics products, what did they do first? They tested on an animal. It's not creating any allergic side effects or any other specific skin-like issues. So they tested on monkeys, pe, rabbits, and rabbits. After that, it was banned in Korea and so many other developed countries. Because cosmetics is more like your fun or more like some, you know, uh, glamorous thing. It's not really related to your health. And even, you know, regarding some basic health issues, many developed countries, they are against this animal testing. That means we have to have a separate, different, completely viable technology that at least that can try to, you know, substantiate those problems that we are facing in that traditional drug development process. And here is the concept that what if we bring the whole human into a small chip? We are developing a drug. We don't need to test that drug directly to the human. But we should directly, you know, infuse or inject that drug onto the chip and that chip is mimicking a real human being. How it's possible? In the picture that you are currently seeing, you can see that, you know, humans have different organs and those all organs are connected to each other in a logical way. They are supporting each other. Like, for example, there is something that is taking out from lungs going to brain. Few things which are coming from brain to other organs. So they are logically connected. What if we try to connect these all organs? Because every organ is as actually made up of cells. Because um, biology mein mein padte hai, okay? cell is a basic unit of life. So sorry organs, you talk about kidney, liver, you know, muscle, skin, brain. Every organ is made up of cells. Agar wo cells, jo hum traditionally culture karte hain, petri dish mein, agar hum ek chip banai, jo ke ek microfluidic chip ho, usme agar hum wo cells culture karein, cells culture karna matlab unko ogana, you let them grow. Thikhe, aapne so cells kisi human ke nikale, thikhe, aapne ek chip pe rakhe, and you try to give them some food, food means media, some nutrients, aur wo grow honne lage. To, is tarah se hum really we can easily not easily i'm sorry easily ek bada hi word khatarnak hai but we can at least try to mimic those uh, you know uh, organs of a human being lekin jaise ki maine kaha ki in sare organs ko logically connect karna fir isme vascularization bahut sare complex problems hai jo ki hum sare ke sare those some people have really tried it but uh, you know still it's in uh, you know incepted phase. So we can do one thing, that we don't go to all of the human beings, now we only follow one organ, we only organ ko follow kare, focus on one So again, let's talk about kidney. So if we make that kidney, which we are making a drug for the kidney, then we don't give the drug directly to the human being, so that the kidney will solve its problem. Rather, we should replicate that thing into a physiological system, a microphysiological system, which Usi tarah ka environment create kare aur agar hum usko drug dena chate hain ya koi or conditions dena chate hain 
जो हम सोच रहे हैं कि यार इफ यू प्रोवाइड दैट टू ह्यूमन दैट वुड क्रिएट अ बिग प्रॉब्लम फॉर दैट ह्यूमन सो व्हाट इफ वी जस्ट ट्राई ऑन ऑन अ सर्किट बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली इफ यू क्रिएट अ आई मीन प्रॉब्लम ऑन टू द सर्किट ओनली सेल्स विल डाई वो जो सेल्स हैं वो मर जाएंगे या वो ग्रो नहीं हो रहे होंगे लेकिन ऑब्वियसली वो चीज ह्यूमन को इफेक्ट नहीं कर रही होगी सो दैट इज एक्चुअली द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट दैट आई वाज ट्राइंग टू यू नो प्रेजेंट हियर and uh, i hope that uh, things are uh, getting better that you uh, understand but here main ek uh, ye jo chip hai chip aapko nazar aa rahi hai isko thoda main discuss karunga see humans they also have blood circulation right and uh, in blood there are many nutrients bahut zyada you know khane i mean khada wata hundan काफी खाण वाली शूं हूं जो ब्लड में हूं सो मेनी न्यूट्रंट्स आर देयर सो व्हाट इफ वी कल्चर द सेल्स ओवर हियर लेट्स सपोज किडनी के अगर हम कल्चर्स करें सेल्स और ऑब्वियसली सेल्स दे डिमांड फूड सो इफ वी कीप ऑन सर्कुलेटिंग मीडिया और यू कॉल इट मीडिया आई मीन ब्लड एंड ब्लड हैज ऑल दोस रिक्वायर्ड न्यूट्रिएंट्स दैट वी नॉर्मली हैव इन आवर डेली लाइफ so these cells will start growing right and if now we want to create any physiological any mechanical or any other effect those cells will react to it they will respond differently for example agar cells hain unko agar aap time pe khana nahi pahunchaoge to obviously they will not grow aur aapko bhi agar khana nahi diya jaye time pe to you understand kya hoga to i mean here are some tools right so you have to have some information about chemical compounds means chemical engineer has to be there then we have some microbiology some uh, some uh, some very good information about organoids or organs how they grow how they behave so that if you take some part of that organ of a human being how it will be managed so you know this information cells information biophysical uh, uh, cues and then ecm i mean the layer that you are you are trying to grow on which your cells would be cultured these things and then bioprinting so these all technologies are there which can possibly help to you know make this system more sophisticated and more reliable for the object objective that we are talking here so organ on a chip using uh, uses micro scale cell culture platform for in vitro modeling of functional features of specific tissue or organ organ of human animal origin by exposing cells to a micro environment so basically this is the definition that has been recommended by a uh, you know fda america so the the basic concept is ke ek micro fluidic chip hai jiske dimensions obviously micrometers mein hai ek simple channel hoga jiske through media guzar raha hoga means blood guzar raha hoga or in the center where actually it's kind of active area where you grow the cells and then there would be so many other sensors so many other you know testing things that you can read from that chip so concept is ke ek chip hai jisme agar aapne kidney ko grow kiya hai kidney ke cells ko grow kiya hai to hum ye expect kar rahe hain scientifically ke agar jo bhi hargade hum is chip pe kar rahe hain to you feel like a you are doing it with a human a real human and that would be more suitable risk free and of course uh, less laborious so here again you know specific uh, uh, what we call uh, we have uh, organ on a chip that we have eye on a chip you know kidney on a chip heart on a chip liver on a chip vessel on a chip you know uh, uh, gut on a chip so so many organs are there and almost all organs skin on a chip all organs they have been developed by different researchers and uh, you know uh, we can uh, read that so here are some different applications so if in a nutshell if i tell you this has all the application that you traditionally do in your lab like you can see the toxicity you know testing ke agar ek drug hai wo human mein ek particular uh, organ mein uske wo toxic to nahi hai uske liye to yahi cheez aap is pe kar sakte hain and people have really done it right and in the same way you can understand the physiological physiodynamic uh, dynamics of any particular drug any particular behavior or you want to you know create a specific mechanical environment to to those uh, you know cells that you can give personalized medicine i can discuss it uh, 
you know, in, in the later slides. And then we have, uh, you know, enemy pathways. There are many, uh, you know, things and assessing the risk substances that we have, for example, there are some foods which are, you know, developed by specific companies and they want that, do they have specific, uh, you know, health issues with, with the humans? We can do this in, in, uh, in this platform. So here is a, you know, very short video. Uh, I want you guys to watch it and that can further, you know, enhance the idea of this technology. Okay, so you can see that uh, this technology has really evolved. And uh, in the beginning, uh, you know, uh, three years back or four years back, we started working on this technology in this lab where I'm currently working. So uh, in the very beginning, because it's microfluidic, you have to see so many things so critical. You know, like we uh, we talk about a pipe jar, I was pani ya koi media ya koi or cheese. Hai. Uh, you know, you just say by a pressure set kar do, everything is fine. Right? Uh, yeah, velocity of fluid set kar de, uh, things would be okay. No. Because here microfluidics is there. So there's shear stress. Agar if anyone is from mathematics, so they would be knowing better than me. Okay, there is Renault number and some other you know distribution like uh, that laminar flow or any other dynamic flow so these all things really you know affect the cell culturing behavior the response of those cells so for example agar hum ek chip mein, jase, you, you saw different chips they were showing it so for example these chips are there and you added some toxic thing right and maybe the you know are some very normal thing you added into the media means aapne khane mein ek capsule de diya and you you are trying to see ke kya effect aa raha hoga un cells ka ek chip mein it is likely possible that due to abnormal fluidic distribution around the cells maybe the cells give you a very abnormal re you know response and agar hum hame itna itni cheezon ka na pata ho to we will directly associate that abnormality of the cells to the food that we have added it but Actually, this was due to other mechanical means microfluidic problems. So that's what I, I was trying to say that this field really requires a very high sense of careful, uh, you know, approach to deal each and every side of the story. So this is like, uh, you can see that this is a, a new way of drug discovery that you connect heart, bone, kidney and other organs and you have to connect logically and logically means that you will tell that if you have a kidney, then you will have a contact with a kidney, which organ, which is a physical contact. So you try to replicate those things and then here you can add the drug. You can see the metabolism of the drug, absorption of the drug and you know, uh, you know any conduction or specific behavior of, behavior of uh, you know, that uh, organ. So the organ on a chip are widely being used for following, you know, uh, application like drug toxicity, how much drug effective it, it, it is, then PK and PD modeling that what is the effect of drug onto your body and what is the effect of body onto the, how, I mean, how you react with the drug. So these things are, are, are there. Then we have precision medicine that it is possible that, uh, you know, not every drug is fit or, you know, a good solution uh, all in all, I mean, for every person you is living in this world. It is possible that a specific drug is not good for you, but it may be good for me. So here comes a very important concept that this is called precision medicine. That precision medicine, this is a kind of future topics. People should, uh, they have started very recently that if, you know, you make the things very personalized. You, that this drug means for a, for a specific person, you develop the drug. And another thing, normally, nowadays, what pharmaceutical companies they are doing, the drugs which are failed means due to some evidences or FDA, they just, you know, uh, rejected those drugs. They are trying to redevelop those drugs for a specific number of people. That this drug for the whole nation or for all the people in the world, it was rejected, but for using further experiments, they are saying that this drug can possibly be used for this group of people. Mala is tarah ki agar unme gene ho, ya is tarah ke you know gender, 
predisposition and other parameters they look into it and they they say ke ye drug iske liye use ho sakti hai so these things can also be used you know in there so this is the approach that how you can use this i will just skip it this is the platform that uh, recently fda used a liver on a chip because normally in biology i think uh, everybody know that uh, we always focus and follow fda you trust this technology or not you just see whether fda has approved it or not like in the current pandemic we always say ke bhai ye vaccine use karni chahiye nahi karni chahiye just go to the who website dekhen ke they are recommending this drug or not or vaccine or not same is the case with that so this technology has really evolved in the last few years and you can see that uh, fda also used this uh, technology uh, you know uh, with one company i think wis institute or any other uh, you know group of people so here again a simple video is there i want you to get little bit motivation from there and then we will go so this was actually a lung on a chip device you can see this whole device is made up of pdms this membrane is also elastic means rub, uh, rubber ki tarah ek membrane hai and that is porous on top of it you can see lung lung cells they have cultured and and bottom of it they have cultured capillary cells and these two chambers they are actually vacuum chambers so what they do you uh, create a vacuum they will just you know uh, stretch it you remove the vacuum that will compress so it that will just stretch and compare uh, i mean com uh, compress see the whole chip is plastic but they haven't added any sensor into it see they are adding uh, media into it and some drugs and then they are looking into it that how it it works anyways so now i'm moving towards the platform development that how we can develop the technology and how we have developed technology in our lab so as in the beginning i told that uh, from i mean i don't have very mature background in bio so the things that i understood related to bio i have told you but mainly i was the part of a team which worked on the development of that uh, you know platform so uh, our target was to make a platform that is user centric and here the user centric means biocentric the biological users normally they they are not that much uh, you know familiar with the technology and uh, i mean i mean the latest technology obviously they are very good at it but we try to you know make the solution which is very easy to be used by by the bio members so in that case we you know we we try to make a very user friendly software means a user interface that they, they can interact to do all the things so for the development of platform we needed the material so in our lab actually because the last video that you saw they have used a pdms but in our lab we use actually pmma or glass chip but now we are also shifting to pdms due to certain reasons and then it has also flexible uh, you know models and you know this one what i was trying to talk about that microfluidic you have to see critically shear stress you know chemical gradients renal numbers and other many other things you know we need to take into consideration before developing that thing and then we have cell culture that's related to bio that what type of cells you have to culture in that and maybe for specific cell culture you need a different environment so for that we have to develop a different chip means a specific chip and then we have ai so we we have used a very good articulate of these these all technologies or groups to make this possible so here you can see that this is platform technology high content that what could be the you know very salient features that a platform should have and these things we actually put in our mind before developing that platform that uh, the system or platform should have a flexibility that you can culture multi i mean multi cellular culture you can do it in this platform then we have a barrier model shear stress customized model bio compatible material sustainable controlled micro environment that thing that where i worked actually because our engineering group works on that then it should be dynamic like you saw in the video that dynamic means dynamic from 
flow point of view, dynamic from, for example, you you are trying to give it a kind of mechanical stimulation, electrical stimulation, so it can you know vary based on the situation and the application. So the first thing in our lab, we developed the platform. Uh, I mean, integrated uh, seeding kit because normally when you uh, you know seed the cells, when you cells ko seed kar rahe hote ho, so a lot of uh, you know cells they drop and uh, it, it's it's not that much viable. So what we did, we we added a, a you know magnetic layer. They are very powerful magnets, but on the other side we have electromagnets. That once you start giving it a voltage, it will be compressed. Uh, they will be just kind of a gasket, and then once you remove the voltage, they would be you can just remove them. So this is the process of chip holder, and. Uh, uh, these are the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that was not chip holder, that was seeding kit actually. So in this uh, seeding kit, th these are some, you know, features that we try to focus and uh, it's, it's being used by the, uh, you know, bio members and it's quite good. Then here is the bilayer kidney on a chip model under dynamic flow. So our lab members, they performed this experiment and it, this paper is, uh, you know, published in a very good journal. And this is the platform. This is actually chip on which they have, uh, you know, cultured the cells. These are micro pumps. And in later slides, I will show you how I managed to, you know, interface those, uh, you know, micro pumps using LabVIEW. So this is, uh, you know, chip holder. You know, the chip on which you culture the cells. And obviously you have to flow the cell. I mean, flow the media. For that, it has to be a gasket. Ek tarika, ek traditional tarika hota, you just have two clips or but problem is you have to run this chip for seven days, 10 days, 20 days, 30 days. So uske, uske se leakage aa sakti hai, bubbles aa sakte hai, jo ke, they are very you know, dangerous and uh, they create a lot of problems while you measuring the things. So is ke liye humne ek, ek chip holder banaya tha. and then this is again a separate uh, you know, approach that uh, what could be the possible models for organ and chip. It can be monolayer or a direct up uh, cell sculpture karo, uh, egg side pe. Then we have bile here that you have a membrane yeah, on right side. You can see you have a membrane on top of it. You have epithelial uh, cells and on bottom you have endothelial cells. And on the both sides, means upper side and bottom side, you have media which is flowing. So there are different models and uh, uh, we have just added here very you know simple models but there are some you know complex models and human is a very complex machine so to mimic it uh, you really need to have very strong biologically mature and mathematically viable you know uh, models to develop so here uh, i mean i will not focus on it that what is bioreactor so this is our platform actually uh, you know these are the peristaltic pumps because when you are culturing the cells and uh, you have a chip, you have to give it a very, you know, uh, carefully maintained environment. And you may, I mean, we have to make sure that the carbon dioxide specific amount is there. Temperature is controlled like a human temperature, uh, 37 uh, around temperature. Hona chahiye. So, wo sara ka sara environment jo hai humne I will, let, uh, I will show you how we control it using lab view or temperature hona chahiye, peristaltic pumps. Now we are shifting, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, peristaltic pump there because they are very expensive. So our custom made lab uh, labs, uh, you know, uh, pumps uh, and then we have sensors. So this is uh, organ and chip media supply, pump circulation, syringe pump. So there are different ways how you can circulate the media or what you can do in the cells. So we use the pump circulation approach in which we use the peristaltic pump, in which we use tubing and there are many issues. In which we are trying to move from peristaltic pump to on-chip you know, uh, <coughs> uh, pumps actually. So, ये एक जो हमने hardware develop की हैं कि normally we have different sensor, ROI sensor. Basically, we have electrochemical, optical sensors, and for reading those sensors, definitely you need uh, the 
circuit boards, PCBs, I mean, transducing circuits, and then they are connected with the national instruments DAQ or Myrio, because recently we have shifted to Myrio, and then we have developed the software, and that's, uh, we have very sophisticated system that uh, the experiment that you're doing, all the results, the real-time results you can see on your mobile phone. So this was a you know, software that I recently developed, and uh, it is basically eight sensors, ROA sensors, and uh, you can see it uh, actually here that it's a uh, 96 well plate, and uh, you know bio members have to you know culture the spheroids, and on bottom of it, you uh, we have added the ROA sensors. So basically, uh, there are uh, you know eight sensors, and they give you real time data onto the computer using MyRU, and second user can easily get the data using mobile phone. Then he, here it was, uh, you know, another software that long ago I developed. And, uh, you know, the prime objective of this software was, uh, you know, uh, first it was interfacing with peristaltic pump that was a commercial, you know, uh, pump actually. And uh, its communication protocol was not there. So we actually developed communication protocol and then we transferred it to a lab view. And uh, if you remember, I, I also discussed that to culture the cells, to create that human-like environment, you have to give a particular required environment. For that, you know, temperature, pH of the media actually, and carbon dioxide, they are very important. So uh, not only the software was monitoring that data, but it also can control that using PID controllers. This was also a software that I developed long ago. I mean, probably two years ago. And that was that in that chip, we had ROS and DO, dissolved oxygen and reactive oxygen species. species. So that used to uh, monitor that. And uh, this was uh, my colleague actually in our lab that who developed this uh, microscope. And uh, you can see this, is uh, I mean, a chip is there and on top of it, how to see those uh, images, right? How to see that culture, uh, cultured cells so we actually developed this microscope. Actually, my colleague uh, developed that and still uh, our members, they are using it. And then we have uh, this platform picture I already showed you. And this is uh, the ROS uh, you know, experiment. That paper is already published. And then we have uh, dissolved uh, uh, oxygen result. If you saw that software that I told you, these are the results from there. And uh, this is lactic sensor. This was recently published. Uh, I was uh, the part of that uh, uh, work actually, and it's electrochemical sensor, three electrode electrochemical sensor. So I will try not to go in detail with that because it is a separate science that how three electrode sensor works. First, we try to immobilize it with the biomarkers that we trying to, uh, I mean, that we are trying to target it and how we read it. We have a separate, you know, uh, empirometric uh, circuit for that or a CV circuit for that. So how, I mean, I can discuss those things in detail if anyone is interested, so we can discuss it later or I can give a separate session on that. That's uh, a very interesting topic actually. And then again, a glucose sensor, we developed that. This is again the platform. And recently we worked on albumin sensor. So albumin is actually, uh, uh, this is also electrochemical, three electrode electrochemical sensor. And uh, we did uh, embedded this sensor into a real organ on a chip platform. And we measured in liver on a chip actually. And we saw that how in liver, the albumin concentration is increasing or decreasing based on different scenarios. So, and this one, uh, my colleague's uh, uh, paper is there and uh, he, he has recently submitted, it's currently under review. I've just added it. So, in this, uh, they have he has actually cultured the spheroids actually means small probably organoids actually, and this is the data of that. This is also our custom made uh, platform. So future sensors uh, which are under development, albumin is already done, but now aptomer based. So ATP sensor, urea sensor. So there are different sensors which are currently under construction, and then we have uh, you know uh, in summary I can tell you that why we moved to this technology. A traditional drug development process may uh, uh, problems they or hum is taraf kyun aaya? Kyunke ek to ye time saving, it's convenient, more convenient, more risk free, and less laborious. 
or uh, you know the, the advantages of this technology is this is like its performance is better if you go in traditional way it takes a lot of time you know things are not that much quantitative so i mean there are a lot of hurdles that a traditional technology is not providing and that's what we can get from you know this uh, organ on a chip or human on a chip or we say microphysiological system so we can combine multiple chips like in the first picture i showed you that means a human on a chip or multi organ on a chip so we in order to make this technology more mature mathematicians have to come here i mean uh, to you know provide more critical data so that we can implement that and uh, make the models more viable more you know realistic and then some you know other fields like materials how we can make them as flexible as compliant and as you know uh, you know mimicking to real human as possible so you know uh, that's what uh, i have learned throughout the time that i was in this lab so you know three and a half years i worked here and uh, it was a nice experience to you know practically work on this very interesting and uh, you know very obviously very eye catchy field and uh, i think i really enjoyed in working in this field and i hope that if anyone is interested i can provide him the information some useful guidance guidelines and uh, you know it can be a very i mean it it would be a fun to you know learn this field so i think that's it uh, from my side anyone uh, who is having any question query i'm here to respond thank you so much thank you dr park mandu sir and uh, yes please any question from participant side they can put forward yeah abdul sattar chand sahab has a question yes. okay uh, thank you for the very interesting and informative talk dr afar thank you sir thank you, it was sir. really exciting topic i just Thank say you. one question like as you show in some picture like mimicking the different organs like liver or heart but i didn't see like mimicking the brain is very complicated so if you are going on human on a chip and you are giving some drugs in this way so what will be the impact or effect on the brain Yes, so yes. how you will manage and i i think it will be really very difficult and challenging uh, sir sir it's really very difficult and i can tell you that uh, our professor if, if if you just see this slide sir uh, you will see this is bbb on a chip blood barrier blood brain barrier on a chip right sir because brain mimicking brain is very very difficult you are very much right but few people have done it like i mean they have done it just for the sake of understanding a very threshold of that topic so you are very much right to you know mimic a brain it is multiple type of cells it has got you know a physical contact a you know neural contact and other chemical contact with almost every organ in the body so it's it's really i mean difficult but people have uh, so far you know done some research to primarily you know do some you know research on it so that's true that it's very difficult and